And there we go. There's the fireworks for the third 200 million skill today. This is awesome. I actually managed to get three 200 millions in one day. Um, they were pretty close to being 200 million to be fair. So I kind of knew I was going to get them today, but I was like, let's go for it. Anyway, I wanted to make this video for you guys so that I can uh, kind of just let you know what I did to be able to finish off 200 million in fishing, mining and hunter in a pretty casual way. And honestly, they really weren't that hard to do. So let's jump in. I'd love to invite you to join the largest flipping discord in RuneScape. We have over 12,000 members and would love to have you in there. You can find that in the description down below. We have several flipping chats to cover pretty much everything, including our Patreon sections where you can get exact buy and exact sell prices, as well as hundreds of updates all day long. Check it out down below and I'll see you in there. Okay guys, so I'm gonna explain how I got these three 200 million skills. Um, you, there are definitely other ways to do it. So just because I say one way, it doesn't mean another way couldn't possibly be better or whatever. I'm just gonna tell you how I did it. So the way that I approach RuneScape skills and the way that I'm able to knock out 200 million skills and 120s and everything without having honestly that much time to pay a whole lot of attention to RuneScape because I'm usually working while I'm playing RuneScape. I need something that is very, very, very chill, very, very, very relaxed and preferably super AFK. So that is what I usually choose to do for my skills. Um, what I did for basically from, uh, I'd say about 40 million hunter all the way to all the way to 200 million hunter was a was mostly just using the protean traps. So as you see right here, these are the protean traps. What I'd highly recommend you do is every time you get a protean box and you're trying to figure out what to, what to open up and use them on, I would put them into traps if you do not have 200 million in Hunter. You'd be very shocked at how fast you will actually get 200 million Hunter. It actually went so fast for me that I ended up with uh, over 14,000 extra traps. Um, so that was pretty awesome. Um, they are very, very quick, and I highly recommend doing, the, doing these during double XP. Although, uh, if you end up like me with too many extra traps, you can actually do them outside of double XP, and they are still very good XP just for a super AFK method. Now, if you're someone who has not quite hit level 99, I got some recommendations for you as well. If you open up your Hunter tab here, and you look into the Butterfly section, this is where ev pretty much everything I'd recommend for people who have uh, like not maxed out their uh, Hunter yet. So... Barehanded catching ruby harvests is probably what I would recommend that you do. The, you can definitely go do box trapping, a whole bunch of different things, and there's you know like crystallized grenwalls, blah blah blah. There's all kinds of stuff you can do that is not this option, but there is hardly anything that is as beneficial and AFK as doing ruby harvests. You can find them right here on the island that I'm on, on the big Anacronia island. They only require level 80 in your hunter to start doing them with 75 and agility. So overall, pretty low requirements if you're aiming for a 200 million in the first place. Um, what you can do is you can just simply uh, sit there and AFK these. AFKing these will give you the, the hunter marks and many other things for Anacronia. So you'll get a lot of benefits from doing that in the first place. Also, they are AFK for the hunter and the agility XP. And as your level increases, they do get quite fast. So that's what I would recommend if you want the most chill way of doing hunter starting at level 80 and 75 agility. Moving up from that, if you would like to do a little bit more risk with a slight bit more paying attention, um, kind of due to the risk, then you can look at Charming Moths. So Charming Moths do require level 88 in Hunter and level 83 in Agility, but they are extremely fast. They are located in the wilderness. That's kind of the reason why I said they have a high risk. So um, when you go do them, I would pretty much only take your Volcanic Trapper set if you have that, your Yak Twee because you can just simply reclaim that, and then probably also an inventory of Arctic Bear Pouches with the Super stores that is really about the only thing that i would take with you because um oh and then obviously you need the thing uh the the whatever it is the wilderness skull to make it so that you get the extra xp that's pretty important um but using all those things together will get you uh, a rate that is pretty fast um and that i would just recommend only bringing that stuff because if you do get pk you can actually reclaim nearly all of that you will lose the 500,000 from the wilderness skull but it you know it's it's kind of whatever if you if, if you're able to sit there and get a good amount of xp before they kill you then you can just count it as a cost of doing the skill 
But once you have enough of the protean traps saved up and you have access to these carry-on Jodinkos, then these are the king of kings when it comes to the XP gains. I would highly recommend that you do prioritize saving up traps and waiting for double XP and then jumping on these. You will find that on double XP though that uh, it is quite difficult to get a spot for these. That is about the only downside doing these. Um, and the spot that I'm standing in right now is I think the best spot. It's like one of these two spots right here that are like the best spots, but you can just simply auto deploy the protean traps, which is what makes them so good. And then have your Arctic bear pouch with your um, tracker aura. I'm not gonna go through all the, all the different boosts for Hunter, obviously. I'm just trying to tell you what I did. But that is literally what I did. I did Ruby Harvest until Charming Moths and then Charming Moths until I had enough of these saved up to do Protean Traps. And also too, I did do quite a bit of the uh, the giant Chinchampa minigame. Um, but the thing is though, is that's not quite as, as amazing anymore. Um, you can do that for a little bit of your levels if you want to, you want something that's like fresh and new, but that is what I did for 200 million Hunter. So literally going from about 40 million to 200 million was extremely chill and extremely fast with the Protean Traps. Next up is mining, and I honestly really, really enjoyed mining. I love mining. Um, I also love the salt crablets. <laughs> so this was my main method of doing 200 million was to do these salt crablets. On my quick chat, it says I've done like 101,000 of these uh, salts, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, a few reasons why I did these is because these are super fast XP. As far as I know, these are the highest AFK XP in the game. And these also will give you the salt crablet, um, like the pieces of salt, so that you can turn those in for even more XP lamps for other skills. So overall, the XP total ends up being very, very quick. They are also extremely AFK. You can sit here and mine these. Once you click one of them, you will sit and mine it for quite a while, so it's pretty awesome. Um, these are also a really great target for you to use your Dwarven Ram Hammer, because the Dwarven Ram Hammer will make it so that um, you do not progress on these, but you still get a lot of extra XP. Whenever Jagex has any kind of special event such as that yak track of 25% then bust out those ram hammers and go go to town on these crablets you cannot use the ram hammers during double xp so keep that in mind so try using them during one of those bonus xp type of events um the things i would recommend bringing here would be the decorated uh mining urn and i would actually recommend putting those in your inventory and not in your brooch of the gods and the reason why is because that way you can use a scrimshaw the rock crushing scrimshaw does make mining go quick quite a bit quicker so if you want to boost up the speed for a little bit more cost than get those uh, rock crushing scrimshaws. If you're planning on buying those from the GE and not using the superior version, then um, I would just be really patient because you can usually buy them for right around mid price. It just takes a minute for them to come in. What I what I normally did was I just put an offer in for like 10 or 20 of them and then just let it sit overnight or whatever for a couple days and then they would all buy. Um, and then it takes quite a while to use a use for to use them. The scr each scrimshaw takes you like three hours to use, so you know it's not really a big rush as far as uh, getting those in your inventory. But that is what I did for uh, most of my XP when I was like at my work desk. Um, so when I was on mobile though, I did something different. When on mobile, I had a little bit different strategy and that was Saren Stones. So the reason why I did Saren Stones on mobile is because on mobile, it is kind of a pain for you to hop islands and not every island that you'll hop to has a mining node. And then also sometimes you have to run all over the entire island to be able to find a mining node. So despite the fact that Saren Stones are not as fast as the crabs or as beneficial or really anything, um, they were something that was very easy for me to AFK while on mobile. So I definitely put in like a solid 15 or 20 million of my experience on these uh, because honestly the rest of it I just did it while I was at my, at my laptop or PC. Um, but I would definitely recommend using the Saren Stones if you want an option that is really good for mobile. Um, something else too, and like I said, I'm not gonna go into everything for these skills because it's not like an in-depth skill guide or anything. I would highly recommend that um, if you're aiming on going for any of these 200 millions like I did, um, I would really recommend getting the legendary auras if you have access to them because getting the getting these legendary auras will make it so that the skills goes the skill goes cons, uh, considerably quicker like if you look at the call to sea right here for fishing this increases your your chance of catching a fish by 15 percent and lasts for one hour there are a couple ways to uh to reset these as well so you can make this go for quite a while you can extend them for an extra hour uh which is super useful so you get two hours of 15 percent more um then also too if you look at this right here when you click one that's already recharging you can recharge it with your Premier Club charge or like an aura reset or something like that. Um, so there's quite a few different um, things you can do to make it so that these last a lot longer. 
So don't prioritize only using legendary wisdom and stuff like that. As far as I know, these legendary um, auras, since they do give you 15% boost, they will give you actually more XP per hour than a legendary wisdom usually will. So that is um, something that I would really note is that it is a good idea to just save up your loyalty points and buy the legendary aura when you can. All right, fishing is up next. And just before I jump into fishing though, I just wanna to say too that if you do not have 99 mining and you are trying to get your mining up that before you start going for the 200 million, which would obviously make sense, <laughs> then you can check on the channel for a full mining guide that is definitely still accurate and relevant. So that way you can find the fastest ways to get to 99 to start off that journey. Um, next up is fishing. So I'm gonna try to cover as many of the, like the little tips and stuff as I can for these skills, but obviously there's so much in RuneScape now, with, especially with doing one skill that I could probably talk for an entire half hour about the different fishing boosts. So I'm gonna try to just hit everything I possibly can. Uh, the waterfall was definitely um, a vast majority of my fishing XP. Uh, when mobile came out, the waterfall became like, that was basically just where I lived. Um, and I'm trying to find it right here for my uh, my rune metrics here. Let me pop it in here. This is not my normal layout. This is like the layout I use for videos. But if I look at my metrics right here, you can scroll down and you can kind of see what I gained uh, right here. So I gained 28.9 million XP in fishing since the last double XP. So this right here has been reset since since the last double XP. So almost 30 million fishing was gained and that was entirely from the waterfall. And that is because I didn't always have time to be in front of the computer, so I was on mobile when I could. And let me tell you, fishing on the waterfall is literally the best thing you can possibly do on mobile. I know that there are a lot of good options for things to do on mobile, but I never found anything anywhere near as good as this. Uh, because quite literally, you just click it, you wait five minutes, you click it again, and that's that's all you do. That's that's literally all you do. <laughs> it is extremely fast XP, honestly, for fishing. Like it just it just really adds up quickly. So this was a lot of my XP. Um, and it was really really enjoyable, super chill, relaxed. Um, also, besides this too, I did do quite a bit of wabigongs, or however you say them, on the Ark Islands. Um, you know, just just like the the, the salt, the wabigongs are very beneficial for you to get because they will give you chimes for uh, your other skills. They also have a quick chat, so it's kind of fun to build that up. Unfortunately, though, the fishing nodes, the wabigongs, are the like most rare thing you can get on an island. So with that, um, finding enough of them for me to actually get to 200 million was pretty difficult. So I ended up doing quite a bit of the waterfall and didn't really mind doing that. Something else I would like to note too is that while you are doing your training too, um, you know you should you should always have an, an, an ancient elven ritual shard in your inventory with a magic carpet behind you because that will make it so you get extra XP per hour. Something else too is don't forget to use the capes once you reach 99. They will help you to get to 120 and 200 million. As you can see right here, this fishing master cape is actually amazing. It provides a chance to get an additional catch that adds up to a lot of extra XP because you do get extra XP for that catch. Something else too is Oh my God, <laughs> if there's one thing I can really tell you guys, it's this. Um, put really good perks on your tools. Make sure you're using the crystal tools and not the other variants. Like do not use the fishing rod omatic because it does not have the innate 5% boost that a crystal fishing rod does. Um, so make sure you're using the crystal versions or higher, like, you know, the, the space and time matic for that or whatever, you know, like just try to find the highest version of the tool you can perk them out with the best stuff you can, and then get them to level 20. The reason why you want to make them level 20 and not siphon them is because at level 20, if we click check right here and you look at the level, let's see level information, scroll down, helpful perks will activate 10% more frequently. The thing is, is if you guys are planning on going for 120 or 200 million, then having level 20 on this and getting that 10% more frequently is going to add up to a massive, massive boost in XP over time. So I highly recommend that you do not siphon your tools and you just keep them on. Keep the tool site, like keep the siphoning and all your XP for your invention, like keep that locked on PVM. Like that is definitely the best way to do this for PVM. Do not do it for your tools. I mean, it's kind of funny because when Invention first came out, I actually recommended people do it on uh, their tools and I very quickly changed my mind. <laughs> Something else too is uh, fishing follows right along with mining. So uh, I highly recommend putting your, your fishing urns in your inventory and then that way you are able to use the scrimshaw. There is a whopper baiting scrimshaw which gives you a chance to get a bigger fish which is it's, it's just really just a cosmetic thing. You don't, you don't actually catch a big fish or anything like that. It just gives you better XP um, every once in a while for a catch. So super useful. Um, unfortunately the brooch of the gods is just not that great for a lot of skilling. As you can see I do have some of my urns in here but that's just 
just because I decided to stop using uh, scrimshaws at some point. Probably, oh, probably because I was on mobile and checking the scrimshaws on mobile is a little bit more of a pain. Um, but overall though, guys, I would highly, highly recommend that you just keep the urns in your inventory and you do not use the brooch of the gods. Hopefully at some point they will upgrade it, uh, update it so that way you can use the scrimshaws and the brooch at the same time. But until they do that, we're just out of luck. Also to the Grace the Elves as well as the Luck the Dwarves combo is like a must have for people who are going to be doing the long haul on these skills because that way you get all kinds of spirits and stuff like that to click. And I don't think there's much else I can tell you besides Perfect Plus Potion. Um, unlocking the Perfect Plus Potion will give you a plethora of benefits to make skills faster. I'm pretty sure that one of them is making fishing 5% faster, so it's pretty awesome. Anyway, guys, this is by far no means, like, by, by no means, uh, okay, I don't know what I'm trying to say there, but this is not everything I could tell you about these skills. I just want to let you guys know what I did for these skills, and hopefully it was very helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and see you guys soon.